So this is Phil. Um, it's uh, May 3rd, uh, 2023. Um, it is about uh, 9.57. There won't be no exercise tonight. Um, I had a pretty rough day. I don't know what happened yesterday. I mean, I after I did the workout, I was feeling a little nauseous. So I took that glass, that mug I have, and I filled it with ice, and I put beer in it, just one beer, and, it, and I drank it. And I felt pretty damn good, a lot better than when I didn't drink it, you know? And it's like, because it, it, it uh, sort of eased off my nausea, because I had nausea all day yesterday. So I'm like, damn, that, I feel pretty good. And you know what one beer means when it makes you feel pretty good? It means two beers. Well, I got about two thirds of the way through that second beer, man, and I got nauseated again. I got so nauseated, and uh, I spent the night twisting and turning. I did get to sleep uh, last night from about, uh, I want to say, I don't know, eight to about one. Got up at one. Couldn't go back to sleep till like three. Got to sleep from three to about five. But man, my insides have been obliterated. I don't know what the hell this is. Um, I shit on myself going to work this morning. And that was a function of having a cup of coffee and just a little bit of creamer. And that's something if you know stomach, uh, intestinal discomfort. When you put caffeine and milk on top of it, it's apt to happen. So I was kind of halfway ready for it. I just wasn't ready for all the fucking pain I'm, I'm feeling in my guts. Um, they're getting better. I got some. Let me get. Let me get this thing of hot chocolate. about that um but uh i hope my tidy whities don't get this man but they're not so tidy and they're they're still white these don't i didn't do no racetracks in these but anyway um this is the swiss miss i was talking about it's it's got sugar in it you gotta be careful because some of it has aspartame in it you don't want that or sucralose in it you don't want that either nestle especially has sucralose but this stuff is very bizarre it has an actual milk powder in it and the chocolate seems to calm things down driving to work and I, it wasn't a fart you know that kind of thing and I felt it coming and I went ooh ooh so I pulled off the interstate down by King's Dominion and I found this uh, burger king I said great burger king I'll go in there they had a fucking place locked they were just doing drive through like I'll give you some drive through right through the window and uh, but right next door there was a gas station I think it's a shell station little shop and went in there and they had a very surprisingly they had a very clean restroom and uh, had toilet paper that was ready available and I needed it and I looked at my pants I said oh man I thought I caught that you know <laughs> but it was it wasn't a bunch of stuff it was just a little bit of water and but it was enough for me to want to change my underwear because I don't want to smell like that going in front of a client you know so we got to work. I didn't tell my boss about it. And when I got to work, I I used the toilet there. And when I got to work, I used the toilet there. And then I loaded my van up. I used the toilet again before I left. 
and by this time I had that much a pile that much a pile of uh, uh, paper towels in my butt because I just you know I'm like I'm not taking a chance you know I was still wearing that nasty underwear I, I went over to, to uh, uh, Walmart and and I bought a six pack of underwear and I bought three bottles of aftershave because I need the aftershave anyway I've been out of aftershave for a week I've been using uh, rubbing alcohol in a sprayer when I shave it works pretty good actually but I like to have a little smell good so I took care of my business in the van Paul pulled it somewhere it was private and got myself all cleaned up, went to work, drove two hours to my job out in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Nobody knew what was going on in the job site. Um, and that was really infuriating because I had loaded a, a, a heavy uh, 60 by 30 top in a box and loaded a heavy base on a green cart and loaded my tools which are heavy on the green cart and I rolled them inside. I was just going, God darn it, man. And this this comes from our people, not from my clients. It's not my customer's problem. My, our people have to ask questions. We have to know the, the room, you know? So I took them back out to the van, loaded it all back up. It was, I had to put uh, moving straps around the stuff and everything. And I put my tools up in, in the van. I closed the door. And as soon as I closed that door, it auto-locked. It went clunk. I went, oh, no. Oh, no. And it locked every door in that van like Fort Knox. And uh, my boss is one of the best bosses in the entire world. He really is. Um, he closed down the warehouse, but there wasn't much happening there anyway. But he closed down the warehouse. He got the extra key to the van. He drove two hours and about 15 minutes out to where I was at. He pulled up to the van and pressed the button, clink, and the doors on the doors unlocked. By that time, they had found where the where they were going to let me build this table. And he was making his jokes because he, he's entitled, you know. I mean, I was a dumbass. I could not believe I did that. But I resisted the urge to damage the van because it, it, here's the thing people don't understand: if your vehicle is is locked people are trying to break into it, they'll tear that son of a bitch to pieces. They'll tear the rubber around the windows to pieces. They'll pull the door. Because I called AAA. And AAA said, oh yeah, they put a rubber bag in there and they pull the frame out and then they put a, a piece of metal in there to unlock the door. I said, I can't do that. You might as well forget it. Just cancel this call. I can't do that. I can't bend the door of the work van that my boss just invested probably $500 and he got that thing I'm telling you, that thing was so dangerous before he put the money in it. And then our mechanics, our mechanics are awesome. It's not, it's it's a private auto shop that he's been going to for 15 years. And they're wonderful guys. They're all wonderful salt of the earth guys. But whatever they did to that van, before that van went in there, it was trying to swap ends on us. And I mean, in the slightest of a lane change, it was trying to swap ends. I think that the A-arm was loose on the front at the bottom on one side because that son of a bitch was dangerous. And now, it drives like a brand new van. And I drove out there, 79 mile an hour, just hooking it up. Now I'm sitting in the parking lot, hooking nothing up, because I was locked out. He came out, he unlocked it, he didn't give me any grief. And I told him, I said, man, this is the last time this will ever happen, because I will always have that key in my pocket, you know? And I will. I don't care if it scratches my, because what happens is that with these keys, I have so many keys, I put them in my pocket, they scratch the top of my leg. But I don't care about that. Scratch the top of my leg, I'll be fine. I don't want to be down in Virginia Beach or up in Harrisonburg, Virginia and have to call again for this kind of service. But long story short, he came out, he unlocked the van. He made a few quips, which was funny. And I was, I was like, you know, yeah, I deserve every one of them. Sorry, I'm so sorry that you had to come out here. And then he goes, look, your second job, which is two chairs. You want me to go deliver those chairs for you? I said, uh, 
yeah, hell yeah. I said, I said, that's a great allocation of resources. And he started moving toward the back of us. That's a line of bullshit, isn't it? He said, yeah, that's a line of bullshit. <laughs> but he took the two chairs and he got them unloaded for the lady, which was wonderful. And made her happy because she he actually met her in the parking lot. He was taking the chairs out and she walked right up behind him. And uh, so that went really well for him and I'm glad about that. I got this table built and it's working pretty good for the customer. Well, actually working it perfectly for the customer, so. But boy, I was so sick, man. I was so sick. And I drove back there, I drove it two, hour, two hours back to the warehouse. I said, man, I don't know what the hell I... Now, here's the thing. I want to stay on it fast. I, I want to do seven days. And now I got two days where I can do pretty much nothing. And I'll stay away from that fucking alcohol. No more beer. And, uh, but I'm not pushing an exercise tonight when my guts are so enraged. I mean, my body is so pissed off at me. I don't know what this is, so. But it's getting slowly, slowly better. And that's the way I've had this kind of pain before on a fast. And I actually had a, a pain on a fast before where it was so bad that, uh, I've got to come along. And I've had that, like, twice in two fast back in the last eight fast and it was around this day you know and some of it was because I drank a beer and some of them was because I just didn't drink the right thing usually the problem is I drink way too much sugar and you can't drink way too much sugar on a fast because maybe your body will oh my god it 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 is a discomfort too much sugar is a discomfort that lasts for a uh, Almost a day, if you do it. Like if I drink a big glass of that uh, naked juice, that the strawberry banana naked juice, just a, like a eight, eight, uh, 16 ounce glass, it's too much sugar. And the strange thing was that today when I was feeling so bad, now I say all that. Let me show you something if I can if I can find it here real quick. Yeah, I tried to save it, so it's here. But this shit right here is amazing. Okay, this is not like anything else they sell because they just sold a. They've got a tropical uh, in a, uh, juice in a real pretty can, and I bought that motherfucker, and it was so strong with sugar I couldn't eat it or drink it. I had to throw it away. I said, "Oh my god, this is ridiculous." But this is not like that. This has genuine honey in it. Uh, uh, it uh, has genuine green tea in it. And it started bringing me back when I drank it. And I got it at that Exxon on uh, Rockville Mannequin when I filled up the van. And this sucker was about 33 degrees, man. It was ice freaking cold, man. I was like, going, oh, I need this, because it was a hot day. So I drank that, and I was feeling better. And I got the van uh, unloaded and my boss, he split. So you can close up the warehouse. I said, okay. But it took me an hour to get that van unloaded and to get everything situated in the warehouse where I could close it up and get the hell out of there. Boy, I was messed up. And, uh, and here's another thing too. Um, this giant spring water, this ain't nothing like uh, freaking Deer Park. Nothing is as good as Deer Park. So I don't know if I'm going to return four cases of that stuff. I don't know if I can or if I can swap it over for Deer Park, but I want to go back to drinking Deer Park water because even warm, Deer Park water is pretty good. And I had a bottle of this giant spring water today that, that tastes like straight up tap water. I said, God darn it, are they putting tap water in these bottles? It tastes just like tap water. And I've never had that with Deer Park. Now I've had, it ain't pleasant drinking hot Deer Park, but you know, you can drink it. So anyway. So I went over there and, uh, to uh, Wawa. There's a Wawa on the way away from the warehouse. And I got this, which is strawberry. It's low-fat strawberry milk, okay? I've never had this, but I was taking a chance. I said, you know, I gotta take a chance. Something different. I know the chocolate milk would do okay, but I'm gonna try a little bit of this. Hopefully there's strawberry. Hopefully there's something in here that's a, a, a sprinkle of strawberry or something. But anyway, I drank this and I started feeling way better. And
and unlike the other day when I got the chocolate milk and I forget what the hell I drank, I, today I got two bottles of ice cold Deer Park water and I got this, which I haven't drank yet, which I'll probably drink in a little while, and it's just orange juice, and I, like, that's a damn, that's a damn cane. Sorry. It turned over on my gloves. It, it worked, and, and the, it's got so much sugar in it from the high fructose corn syrup. Anything it turns over on, it makes sticky. So it made all my gloves sticky. It made my seat and my, my van sticky. It made everything in that bag sticky. I'm like, yeah, oh my god, you know. So anyway, but we're feeling a little bit better now, and I'm still staying on the fast. I want to get through this fast, but there won't be no exercise tonight. I guess the lesson is don't drink beer when you're fasting. Don't drink alcohol when you're fasting. Boy, I, I paid a hell of a price today. And I'm still paying a hell of a price. I'm still hurt. And it'll go away. It just takes time. And, uh, anyway, y'all have a wonderful weekend. And we will hopefully be posting a workout tomorrow when I feel a little bit better. And, uh, have a great Saturday and Sunday, folks. God bless you.